Hi everybody and uh, welcome to AP Laser Workshop. Uh, for those of you that are returning, welcome back. And for anybody who's first time, um, thank you for joining us and welcome. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're uh, not really going to focus on design things, but we're actually going to be working with the rotary tool. Um, and I'm going to show you how to set up for um, an item kind of like this with an urn, where we have a, a smaller uh, diameter than where we're actually going to be engraving on, and how we can actually adjust and set that up so our engraving doesn't come out stressed or anything. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our machine right now um, and I'm going to show you first off how to properly set up for your rotary tool. Alright, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to um, get our rotary tool set up, um, engage in our system and everything like that. So the important part is, is to first make sure that your machine is turned on before we even engage our rotary tool. Um, my machine's already turned on, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump over into my RD Works program here. So the first thing that I want to do, um, you can see that I've got my image imported in here already. And I'm going to come over here to my user tab over in the top right hand corner. And I'm going to make sure that um, my other is selected right here um, next to processing and auxiliary. And I'm going to scroll down and we have our rotating, enable rotating, circle pulse, and diameter. Now uh, the circle pulse and the diameter can change based off of the type of rotary tool that you ha have. Uh, so we have a few different styles. And I have a nice little cheat sheet here. Uh, I'm going to show everybody real quick. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, and this will be on our AP Laser University site, uh, available for download. So you can quickly see the type of rotary tool that you have, the circle pulse based off of a three-phase or two-phase motor, um, and also the diameter that it needs to be set with. Um, we're going to be working with our uh, retro extender rotary tool today. Um, and so I'm working with a three-phase motor, so it's going to be 5,000 for my circle pulse and a diameter of 1.46. And that's what I have uh, preset in here right now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to click on read to read the information in my machine. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch from enable rotating from no to yes. And then I'm going to click on write to write that information back to my controller. Um, from here, I'm going to go ahead back to my machine here. I'm going to power off my machine and I'm going to flip the toggle switch on the side of the machine um, from flat work to rotary. Or um, if you have one that says Y axis and rotary, we're going to switch it to the rotary. I'm going to go ahead and power on my machine. And with that switch, basically I've turned off the power to my motor for my Y axis and has switched it over to my rotary tool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let my system reset here. Um, it's important to make sure that the system completely resets fully. Um, don't try to hit escape or anything on the control panel. Um, what's going on here is that we've got switches inside of our machine um, that shows us where our working area is, our zero, zero point. And that's what's going on when the machine first powers on and the laser head goes to the back left hand corner. Um, for our rotary, because we're plugged into our Y axis, it doesn't have a switch to tell it when to stop or where its zero point is. So the machine resetting takes a little bit longer than uh, the typical flat work does because what's happening is the rotary tool is looking for that switch. Once it can't find that switch, it's just finally going to give up and it's going to go to its last known positioning. Once the system is done resetting, um, you will see the laser head come from the left hand side and come over to the right hand side. Um, and your screen on the control panel um, won't say system resetting anymore. It'll be clear just on normal operations. Again, what we're going to be working with is this urn here. And uh, unfortunately, this is my only urn that I have. And so what I've actually done is I masked this off here so we can actually etch on the masking tape here um, so I continue to use this urn for uh, later classes. Now, uh, one of the things customers have a lot of uh, difficulty 
trying to find out is a good way to make sure that your rotary tool is in there straight. Um, what I normally do is I normally have a test cup, uh, something like this, very simple. And what I do is I take a speed square and I set on top of this and I actually draw a line right down. And we can kind of see our line right here that I've drawn. This allows me to stick this inside the rotary tool and then actually run my laser head back and forth to make sure that I'm staying along that line. Um, I've already gone and done that step here just to save some time. So we know that we're not nice and straight. So I'm going to go ahead and stick in my rotary tool or my uh, urn into my rotary tool. Put this back a little bit. Now one thing that you want to make sure too when you're setting up your piece inside your rotor tool is you don't want to pinch it too tight. You do want to leave a little bit of room in there. Um, that way it does have a little play. If you pinch it in there too tight, what can happen is it can actually bind up and stop rotating. So now that I've got my piece inside here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring my laser head forward. Because my Y motor is not engaged, um, I can manually move my rail front to back here. Then I'm going to go ahead and take my focus stick and make sure that I'm in focus. Drop down my laser head slightly. Bring my laser head down to the right hand side. And I'm going to check my focus here. And you can see that I'm out of focus. So I'm going to use my adjuster knob on the side here and raise this back end up a little bit. Just like that. Bring it back over here. And we can see we're a little bit high there. So I'm gonna adjust my nozzle back up. And then just double check down here. And there we go. We're nice there. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my laser head back over to the left hand side here. Um, just right above where I wanna start etching at. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit origin to lock that into place. I'm then going to go ahead and move my laser head out of the way because I want, now that I'm in focus so I can quickly put this back in, I want to actually do some measurements now. Um, and to calculate how we're going to adjust our image. Now the reason that we need to adjust our image is because our drive shaft here um, is a lot smaller than what we're etching on. So if we just set this up for normal, then what's going to happen is actually going to stretch out our image. Um, the same is true if this was larger than the area we were going to engrave on. Um, again, we do have a sheet on our AP Laser University site um, that will give you the formula and the directions to do that, but we're actually going to do this right now. Um, the formula that we're actually doing is doing our drive um, in, uh, divide that by our working area, and then multiply that by the size we actually want this on. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to calculate for our drive in, which is going to be a diameter of four inches. I am then have to calculate my diameter here. So because this is round, what I actually have to do is figure out my circumference. So I'm going to take my fabric measuring tape here and I'm gonna measure out, and I'm about 20 and 1 8 inches on a circumference. To change that into a diameter, what I'm actually gonna do is take my circumference and divide that by pi, which is 3.14. Um, I've got a sheet here on my laptop. So we have our drive area, which is going to be four. We're gonna divide that by our work which is if we bring up our calculator here and do 20.125, which is 20 and 1 eighth, and divide that by our 3.14 equals 6.4. So our work is going to be 6.4 
And the size that I want this to etch out on is going to be five inches. And I have that set right inside here. So we have our size on our image at five inches by 1.426. We're going to multiply that by 5. So we have 4 divided by 6.4 times 5 equals 3.125. So what I need to do is I need to go back to my RD Works program here and I need to adjust this to be that number there, which is the 3.125. So I'm going to make sure my ratio is unlocked, and I'm going to change it from 5 to 3.125. So it's going to look squished inside of our system here. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. And my preference for starting off my origin um, is typically in the left center position. Uh, this just gives me a little bit more control over where the top of that image is going to fall at based on my material here. I'm going to hit OK. Go back to my work area. Now I'm going to go ahead and set my speed and my power and my interval. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on my mode here, my laser scan. Um, I've got this already set up, so I'm going to do a 15 speed, a 5 power, and I'm going to go, I typically would go with a little bit higher of an interval, um, but again, just to save on some time, I'm going to space that part a little bit more and just do a 200 DPI or an interval of a .005. I'm going to head and hit OK, and come down here and download. Hit OK, duplicate over the old one. So my file's downloaded now. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and put my urn back inside the rotary tool. I already have this focused. I'm going to go ahead and hit Escape because I'd already set my origin spot. Bring it back over here. ahead and shut my lid and go ahead and hit start. Now that we're done here, move my laser head out of the way. We're going to take our urn out and take a measurement to see what we have here. Which we have five inches exactly. Um, Mike and uh, Rachel are asking, uh, where do I plug into the laser? Um, depending on the type of laser that you have or how old it is, um, typically you'll notice on the right hand side, on the inside of the machine, you'll see a small little round port that you would plug into. 
Um, if you have like our 1812 or our 2616, um, you would actually disconnect the Y motor at the white plug-in um, and then plug in your rotary tool there. Um, I have, uh, Michelle has asked, after my training I tried to do a cup and when I got in the rotary it just kept spinning and didn't stop. No, uh, actually Michelle, that is normal. That is that rotary tool actually resetting. Um, you'll see it typically spin real fast in the beginning and then as it tries to find that switch, what it does is it slows down and it doesn't quite look like the rotary tool is spinning, but it is slowly ticking. Um, just again, make sure that you let the system completely reset um, before carrying on. And again, um, as always, we always do have technicians available. Um, so at any time you have any questions over this process or having difficulties with your rotary tool, by all means, please give us a call. Um, Lisa is asking, um, ver how do I verify the resizing of the artwork after I calculate the formula? Um, that I changed the width on. Um, so basically, you're going to want to do this formula with anything that is sized differently. So on the, the drive end, if that size is larger or smaller, then the area you're going to be engraving on, you want to always do this formula. If it's just a standard tumbler like a Yeti mug or anything like that, there's no need to do any kind of formula like that. Um, and I know we do have an upcoming video um, that we're going to be walking over like the, doing a Yeti on doing a full circumference engraving too. So please make sure to join that class as well. Um, Mike and Rachel asks, are there steps outlined in the downloadable manual? Yes, there are step-by-step -step instructions um, in our owner's manual that will walk you right through. Um, the only thing you want to really pay attention to is the type of rotary tool that you have so you can make sure that you have the correct circle pulse and diameter and put it inside there. Um, so letters up, the first cup was perfect. One thing I changed was the cup and the letters bunched up. Okay, so Felicia is asking, and it's a very good question. Um, when basically she had uh, she had done a bunched up letters is what she got so she did one cup perfectly fine um, she went to another cup and that was different um, so um, Felicia on certain things like that without actually seeing the image it's hard to tell exactly what happened there um, but if you did resize that image or you didn't resize that image and you changed out the tumbler and it was a different size tumbler that could have very well caused your issue there um, Michelle is asking, are, uh, are the circle pulse and diameter going to be the same for everything on my rotary? Um, th yes, they are. So once you actually, you have your numbers for your specific rotary tool, those numbers are never really going to vary at all. Um, everything you're going to do is all going to be on the image size on resizing that to make sure that comes out correctly. Um, again, I appreciate everybody joining. Um, hopefully you found this um, informative. Um, and hopefully help you out with some of the problems and issues you may be having. Um, until next time, you guys have a great day.